Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. Before we start literally anything, I have to say a huge thank you to those who joined the live stream last week. It was a fundraiser live stream for Animal League America. The original goal was to raise $400 for animals impacted by Hurricane Ian for this charity and you guys managed to raise uh, just over 1200 so that was just so heartwarming and incredible and I am ever grateful to you guys. Um, without you, it wouldn't have been possible. So thank you so much to everyone who joined, who participated, to those who donated. Um, you guys really made a difference there. So again, thank you so much. Today, because everyone has been so focused on hurricanes in recent weeks, I thought we could do something a little more in line with the tropics and also sort of segue into what could potentially be hurricane content in the future. Today, we're going to be taking a look at tornadoes spawned by tropical storms, but not just any tornadoes spawned by cyclones. We're going to be taking a look at the strongest and most notable tornado outbreaks that have ever been spawned from tropical storms, hurricanes, or typhoons that we know of. So let's get right into it. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already down below. Uh, it really helps me out and I do appreciate it. So go do that. Thank you so much. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the meteorology. We're not gonna focus on this for too long because it's a lot of the same stuff that we sort of already cover, but we are gonna take a look at a few of the points and some of the myths and discourse that sort of surround tornadoes spawned from hurricanes and just dissect them a little bit. Tornadoes within cyclones, just like any other tornadic storm, are formed within a thunderstorm. These supercells, rotating storms are embedded within the rain bands of the respective hurricane or typhoon. It's in the outer bands of a tropical storm, roughly 50 to 200 miles from the storm's center, where warm, moist air is being pumped into these bands. And this is where all the action happens. With that massive amount of warm, moist air that tropical cyclones bring, there's usually also already a decent amount of instability in the air, which as we know is already conducive to tornado formation. And once a cyclone moves over land, a key element comes into play, increased friction. Friction is what allows the winds to slow down at the surface level, while the winds in the upper levels remain strong in the atmosphere. This creates the wind shear. Once you have the increased friction and the wind shear present, really all the ingredients are already present for tornadic storms to form. Everyone say hello, Blaze. Blaze, Blaze. <laughs> And supercells are oftentimes already present in the outer bands as well. And that's why whenever tropical storms or hurricanes approach and make landfall, you already see tornado watches in place because meteorologists and the forecasters know that there's a good chance that at least one, if not multiple tornadoes are going to be possible as soon as those outer bands make landfall. Now you may or may not have heard some discourse about the northeastern area of a hurricane being the most dangerous for tornadoes or just generally the eastern side of the hurricane being the dirty side. The right front quadrant relative to a hurricane or tropical storm's direction of propagation is the most area of concern and that really boils down to the right front quadrant having higher wind speed. That is often because of steering currents so really when you hear someone talk about the dirty side of the hurricane, it really is the entire eastern side that's a lot more dangerous. Statistically, most tornadoes that are spawned in these tropical systems are comprised of the EF0 to EF1 intensity storms and last just a few minutes, sometimes maybe a minute or two. But they can and have been stronger, more frequent, and even violent in the past, which is exactly what we're going to be looking at today. I want to start off with a fairly recent event that most of us are already pretty familiar with, Hurricane Ida. On August 29th, 2021, 16 years to the day of Hurricane Katrina's landfall, 
Category 4 Hurricane Ida makes landfall in Louisiana, devastating Grand Isle. With 150 mile per hour sustained winds, considerable flooding, and a massive storm surge, Ida was, in every sense, disastrous for southern Louisiana. But even after moving fairly far inland over Louisiana, Hurricane Ida still wasn't done. In the coming days, Ida would cause substantial damage from the southeast, up through the mid-Atlantic, and eventually into the northeast. By September 1st, after having traveled inland for hundreds of miles, it would be the remnants of the storm that took most people by surprise, by causing catastrophic flooding and tornado outbreak. As the system was working its way northeast, the atmosphere out ahead was increasingly favorable for tornadoes. So on September 1st alone, 11 confirmed tornadoes would be spawned from the remnants of Hurricane Ida's outer bands, producing multiple EF2 tornadoes in Pennsylvania and in Maryland, and one shockingly strong EF3 in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. I think a lot of you probably, like myself, watched this happen sort of live uh, on Twitter or on the news, wherever, but it was shocking because this wasn't just a small, weaker looking tornado, this was a wedge. It was kind of unreal to watch happen because you know that these areas are so densely populated, you know that these people don't normally see tornadoes. So I think a lot of people, myself included, really feared kind of the worst with this scenario, seeing how uh, big the storm, the actual tornado was, was honestly really um, strange. After 30 minutes and 12 miles of continuous damage, the tornado finally dissipated just before striking a larger mall complex. In total, this tornado would be estimated to be roughly 400 yards in width, having over 140 mile per hour winds and caused $64 million in damage. The Mullica Hill Twister was the fourth ever EF3 rated tornado to ever be confirmed in New Jersey. Thankfully, there were no fatalities from this Mullica Hill EF3 tornado in particular. In total, Hurricane Ida would produce 35 confirmed tornadoes over the coming days as its remnants moved inland, causing one fatality and I also want to note quickly that it wasn't just the tornadoes that were extremely impactful from the remnants of Hurricane Ida in the northeast. The torrential rain across four states from Ida was also deadly. From the entire storm, Hurricane Ida would ultimately take over 100 lives in nine states. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I really wanted to talk about Hurricane Ida specifically. Um, it really is an unfortunate example of why you can't underestimate these storms even after they've made landfall and moved far inland. I think there's often this mentality or unspoken and underlying programming sort of that we have that makes us believe that once these storms have moved inland and the further they track, the less damaging and dangerous they're going to be, but that's simply not true. I'd attract hundreds of miles inland in the eastern half of the United States and in its last stretch of land caused some of the worst damage in its entire life. Overall, Hurricane Ida was just an incredibly impactful and devastating storm that won't soon be forgotten. For the next tropical systems, we're going to take a look at two. It's a twofer. We're going to look at Hurricane Francis and Hurricane Ivan. And the reason we're doing that is because of the close proximity in which these two hit the United States and because they both spawned a massive amount of tornadoes. September 2004 was an extremely active month in hurricane season, with a total of four hurricanes that went through Florida within six weeks. On September 4th through 8th, 2004, Hurricane Francis made landfall in Hutchinson Island in southern Florida. 
In the coming days, between the southeast and mid-Atlantic states, the storm produced over 100 tornadoes. That's a lot. And by September 6th and 7th, with the Cyclone Center moving over central Georgia, now the Carolinas were in the hot seat, in that northeastern or right front quadrant of the storm. And with a favorable atmospheric setup, a tornado outbreak ensued. As the outer bands moved into Southern Carolina, dozens of tornadoes tore through the state with multiple F2 tornadoes and even an F3 near Camden and Kershaw, South Carolina. The F3 left a seven mile path where buildings and mobile homes were destroyed, a horse trailer lifted up on top of a stable, and countless trees and power lines downed as well. Thankfully, there were no fatalities with this one specific tornado, even with it being an F3 that moved through a region with a lot of mobile homes, that's always a huge concern. But Francis ultimately still took 49 lives in total, caused $4.4 billion in damage, and there were five injuries from a separate F2 tornado that touched down in Chesterfield County in South Carolina. With over 100 tornadoes from this tropical system, as we mentioned, that's a massive number. And at the time, this was at the time the largest tornado outbreak that had been spawned from a hurricane in decades, but not for long. Just a week and a half later on September 16th, 2004, Hurricane Ivan makes landfall just west of Gulf Shores, Alabama. Hurricane Ivan at its peak intensity was a massive Category 5 storm, and even though Ivan would hit the Gulf Coast as a Category 3, it was still packing 120 mile per hour sustained winds as it made landfall. And that's not all. In the days following, the ingredients from Ivan were so conducive for tornadic activity, the result would be a three day long tornado outbreak across the southeastern states. And it wasn't just a few tornadoes. Hurricane Ivan spawned over 120 confirmed tornadoes, meaning it now effectively held the record for the largest tornado outbreak to have ever been spawned from a hurricane in United States history. The bulk of the tornadoes were on September 17th in the mid-Atlantic region, just two days after Ivan's landfall in Alabama. Many of these twisters were F0, F1, and 2 intensity, as we mentioned, but there were instances of stronger ones as well, including an F3 in Remington, Virginia. It was reported that a pickup truck was lifted over 75 yards, power lines and trees were downed, and several homes would lose their roofs. Unfortunately, despite the fact that this stronger tornado, the F3, had no fatalities, there were still at least seven people who lost their lives from the tornado outbreak that ensued from Hurricane Ivan with another 17 injured. The hurricane itself took a total of 123 lives and caused $26 billion in damage. And this is still the largest tornado outbreak spawned from a hurricane in United States history. The next tropical cyclone we're going to look at is a really infamous one in the weather enterprise. It's Hurricane Carla. Galveston did not lie within the circle of the eye. There had been no let up there. And now the wind came screaming from the south instead of the east, harder than ever and with more rain. September 11th, 1961, Hurricane Carla makes landfall in the Texas coast as a Category 4. Carla ravaged parts of the Texas coast points inward, particularly in Galveston, where 10 to 15 feet of storm surge devastated thousands. And this massive hurricane was groundbreaking for several reasons. The first and arguably the biggest reason is because of how groundbreaking it was for broadcast meteorology. With human life at stake, we sought the best way to provide a service to the public. With the idea in mind of placing live cameras in their offices to relay firsthand official announcements on the storm's progress. The Bureau was calling it a hurricane now. They gave it a name, Carla. 
this was the first time ever that a hurricane was filmed in person and had coverage with radar. So this was a huge milestone for broadcasting and because it really gave people for the first time the ability to see the storm as it's happening so they can really know what to expect and how devastating it's going to be. This really helped people take storms like this more seriously. The reason we have brought our uh, live remote cameras down here to telecast direct from the United States Weather Bureau in Galveston is the fact that the Weather Bureau here has the radar that 250 mile range. This is what they and the citizens of the Texas Gulf Coast saw. But outside of that, the damaging winds and storm surge weren't the only problem that those in Galveston and Texas were about to face. During landfall, Hurricane Carla would spawn at least 18 confirmed tornadoes, 10 of those being in Louisiana and 8 of them in Texas. But that's not all. Hurricane Carla didn't just spawn tornadoes, it spawned a violent tornado. Only one of two violent tornadoes that have ever been spawned from a tropical system. In the early morning hours of September 12th at 3.15 a.m., the F4 Twister moved through the already hard-hit areas of Galveston. The Twister was estimated to be about 100 yards in width and caused a damage path of about one mile, but even in that smaller area in portions of Galveston, where the population is really high, it was devastating. I called over to get my kids, and I got them and wrapped, threw an old blanket around their head because everything was flying in on us. And it stood there until the fireman got there holding the girls. I, I, I covered my wife and told her to lay still. When it all was over with and the noise left, we crawled out from under there and I said, well, now roll out of this glass because her bed was covered with glass. She rolled to me and I picked her up and carried her to over here. Then we went upstairs into that house. That's all I know. Over 200 buildings in that one mile stretch were damaged with some 70 of those being destroyed. It caused eight deaths on top of the fatalities and injuries that had already occurred because of the hurricane's landfall. And what's even more wild is that this wasn't even the only tornado that spawned in the early morning hours. In fact, another tornado would hit Galveston again just a few hours later at 6 a.m. Not nearly as strong, of course, and there were no injuries or fatalities with the 6 a.m. tornado, but still just really wicked. That's the only way I'll never forget what it sounds like. I don't ever want to hear another one, not if I live to be 100. It looks like a cyclone. They just twisted it to pieces and just lifted it up over another house and dropped it right in the edge of the bay. Well, we found them when we got back. Our house is all tore right down the street, and we just went and got a truck to come back and see if we could salvage some of her stuff, because we can't do anything with ours. There were also multiple other F3s as well between Texas and Louisiana that took multiple lives. So overall, this was just a really impactful storm in terms of tornadoes, many of which were strong and even a violent tornado. In total, some $2.3 billion of damage accrued, and that is accounting for inflation. Tens of thousands of homes, businesses, and farms that were destroyed. Hurricane Carla took a total of 43 lives. This one is certainly of the most anomalous that we're going to be talking about today, so I don't want to give the impression that an F4 from a hurricane landfall is common or something that really even happens really ever, because it's not. We of the Weather Bureau are sure that public service such as this contributed significantly to minimizing the loss of life and property in this catastrophe. Now we're going to switch it up just a little bit from talking about hurricane spawned tornadoes and now take a look at typhoons and tropical storms, particularly in East Asia, in China, because that's where they are most commonly seen. Because there's so much literature on these events, um, there's a lot of really great information to be had out of a lot of these and I wanted to share some with you all. 
Typhoons and tropical systems in China are very similar to hurricanes in the United States in terms of the tornado threat. They often happen in that northeastern or right front quadrant, and they also statistically most of the time are relatively weak and short-lived, but there have been some exceptions to that, which is what we're going to look at. Now, I do want to say that these tornadoes are more commonly seen in the flat regions on the coast, particularly in Jiangsu and Guangdong provinces. Uh, they are sort of miniature tornado alleys because of the way that they are geographically set up. We're going to be talking about them a lot here. We're going to start off with a notable tropical storm, and that is 2018 tropical storm Yagi. Now, this event is notable for a big reason. Tropical storm Yagi was the first ever recorded tornado outbreak in the modern history of China with 11 confirmed tornadoes. That's huge um, for them to have recorded this information, to have done a study on it, and for there to be 11 tornadoes enough to be classified as an outbreak in China is a pretty big deal. On August 12th, 2018, Tropical Storm Yagi, after having battered the Philippines, makes landfall in China and Zhejiang province, progressing northwest. In the Philippines alone, five people would lose their lives in this storm along with $19 million in damage. In eastern China, in that province, three people lost their lives with some $367 million in damage as well. This next one is another infamous example of a tornado spawned by a tropical storm in China and arguably, possibly the strongest tornado spawned by a tropical system in China that we know of. Um, I'm inclined to believe there's been stronger before in the past and we just haven't known about it, but this is arguably the strongest that's ever happened in China. On October 1st, 2015, Typhoon Mujige makes landfall in southeastern China after having ravaged the Philippines. Mujige, while its effects were widespread, directly hit the provinces of Guangdong and Guangxi. Not only were the people devastated by the torrential rains, wind, and flooding, they also had a pretty intense few days of tornado outbreaks as well. In three outer bands of Typhoon Mujige, several tornadoes were spawned in the Guangzhou and Foshan region where a strong tornado would even touch down. It was immediately upon touching land that the convective cell that generated the Foshan tornado would be initiated and just after moving over Macau would fully form. <laughs> Oh, 那些車全部停在路邊,喐都不動了,打起啊,打起見到龍卷風啊,我就靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠靠
And as we've talked about in other videos, there in specifically in China, there are no tornado sirens. So you're not getting a tornado warning on top of that. So really there's a lot going on here uh, that already makes these people at such a huge disadvantage um, in terms of being in a typhoon and then having her uh, having a tornado happen on top of that. It's because of events like this one, um, because of the EF4 in Jiangsu province that we discussed in the previous video, um, and because of a deadly microburst that actually happened pretty recently as well, uh, that the tide is actually really starting to change in terms of funding and research on tornadoes in China. It's been pretty recently that China decided to ramp up their funding and studies and surveys of tornadoes, which is wonderful news. These storms are finally getting their own visibility for the first time. And now scientists in camps are trying to develop their own damage indicators, finally working on a system to kind of create their own EF scale, which is really exciting news as well. So overall, I'm telling you, China is the place to watch for tornadoes. It's the place to keep your eye out for videos and for new and upcoming chasers. So if you don't follow some of these accounts on Twitter, you are really missing out on incredible tornado footage and videos that are out there. Yeah, I, I could gush on it forever and ever. I think I'm so excited to see the kind of science that comes out of Twisters in East Asia. I'm excited to see kind of how that progresses in the next decade or so. I think if there's anything I would like for us to really sort of take away and process after all the discussion from today's video is that we really have to be careful of the mentality that QLCS or hurricane spawns tornadoes are weaker and so it's not that big of a deal. This is a kind of dangerous mentality that we have. These can and do cause a lot of damage, particularly to areas where they have already been flooded, areas of lower income, those with disabilities that don't have the option to shelter properly or don't have uh, the means to hear the warning. There's an entire list of higher risk groups that are impacted a lot more, even in these EF1 to 2 tornadoes. And frankly, that's a whole other discussion. And now that I think about it, I think I'll make that an entire other video someday. My goal here is always to promote education in some kind of capacity um, or to chip away at myths and stereotypes, even if it's just a little bit, uh, and to really show what people go through on all ends of the spectrum of tornado damage not to just look at the worst, goriest, most graphic parts of the storm. We're here to learn about something and we're here to really gain perspective on how other people perceive and experience these severe weather events. I know there's going to be a few of you that in the comments maybe go, Carly, what about Hurricane? What about Hurricane Carly? What about Hurricane Dan or Hurricane, you know, Gandalf or whatever? Um, and I, to that I say, you know, I really wish I could get to all of the tornadoes ever in history. Maybe eventually I will one day, but it's going to take a little bit of time first. So if I didn't talk about one that you really wanted to hear today, please forgive me. Maybe I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for being here as always. If you want to see me being goofy on Twitter, you can go follow my Twitter. Again, if you haven't already, like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what you thought about this video. Yep, that's all I have for you all today. I will see you all in the next one. Bye. on Blaze. Hurry up. Why? <laughs> to think of the spinning as starting out like a hamster wheel, you know? Out of control. Carly, can you make sense, please? Oh my god, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs>